This is a low profile portable rock trommel. It uses electric motor with a reduction gear. It has two handlebars, three drive wheels, and three idle wheels. The idle wheels also holds the drum in place and the drum sets at five degrees horizontally. The rock trommel is placed where the old landscape fabric is, was removed. The trommel dirt falls to the ground where it is used as backfill. The cleaned rocks fall on top of the new landscape fabric and the box fan is used to separate the weeds and roots from the rocks. This approach minimizes the distance the rocks and dirt is moved. Next we'll go over the tools that I used to build the trommel. This miter saw has come standard with a carbide blade and you can use carbide blades to cut aluminum stock and I'm using aluminum for the braces for the trommel frame. It also has a laser light which is not showing up here but it has a laser light that shows where the blade will cut into your lumber or aluminum stock. It also swivels 45 degrees from center and I have it mounted to a sheet of plywood so I can just lay it on the ground and use it to cut my wood or aluminum. Here are the other tools I use for the trommel build. I used stainless steel deck screws to fasten the two befores together and the two befores will have knots in them so when you're driving a long screw into four inches of wood and you hit a knot there's a high probability that you're going to twist the screw in two but with a uh, stainless steel screw it's it's less likely to happen and also you want to drill a pilot hole to make certain that if there is a knot um, it gives the, ch the screw a better chance of screwing through the knot and then this is the drive bit for the stainless steel screw which is a illustrated right here so out of all these drills the ones I have set hanging below here are the ones that I used which is only like five drills. I used the real small one to create pilot holes. This is called the big gator tool and what it allows you to do is to take a drill and put it in the properly sized hole so you can drill a perpendicular hole and that's important when it comes to um, drilling the holes for the idle wheels. The build challenge for this trommel design is coming up with a perfect contact between the trommel drum and the drive wheels and idle wheels. As you watch this video you'll notice that the drive wheels are making perfect contact with the drum as well as the idle wheels are fitting perfectly aligned within the bike rim. All right, so to build the frame, the first thing I did was I cut all the wood pieces. And for sets of pieces that require the 55 degree angle, for instance, like over here where the pillow bearing mounts to the two before, 
I would make all those angle cuts at the same time to ensure that these cuts are the same as well as uh, the cuts for the idle wheel. So then uh, to show you how we made those cuts the miter saw is only uh, able to cut a 45 degree angle from center. To get the extra uh, 10 degrees we would first make a 10 degree wedge and you do that by setting your table saw 10 degrees and place your 2 before 4 in there to make a, a 10 degree wedge. One of the things you got to be mindful of is when you place the wedge on the miter saw you have to make certain that your 2 before 4 is not going to be hitting the side of the miter saw. So you have to move the wedge in closer to the blade if that is the case. So once you set your miter saw to 45 degrees plus the 10 degree wedge, that will give you your 55 degree angle cut. To ensure the trommel frame has good contact points with the trommel drum, these three assemblies must be put together using a fixture like this, which holds the vertical and the horizontal pieces square to each other. It also provides the means to drill the idle wheel hole from the back side. You'll notice we use duct tape as a shim to make certain that this piece is square to this edge of the plywood. Once you've completed the three assemblies which we mount the drive wheels and idle wheels to, you notice that the input side of the trommel and the output side of the trommel, the dimensions are the same. When we complete the build, what we'll do is we'll use a skill saw to cut the ends off from the output side. That will give the trommel drum a five degree slope towards the output side. But during the build process, it makes it easier to assemble if both the input and output assemblies are the same length. So as we move forward in building the trommel's frame, we're taking the two outer assemblies and we're holding them temporarily with a piece of plywood, which was our fixtures plywood. And we're making certain that the distances which mounts the pillow bearings and the idle wheels, we're paying particular attention that these distances are correct. And we do that by making certain that the assembly is squared to the plywood. And I happen to be working on a slab concrete that was also level. And since it is level, then if I use a level to level my assemblies, then that ensures that the frame will be put together and it will be square. I'm using these temporary metal angle irons to help temporarily hold the horizontal part of the frame, which this outer leftmost part is the handlebar. And then I flip the frame upside down to put in the middle assembly. Here we're measuring it, making certain it is in the proper location, and then we put C-clamps, and then finally use the level again to make certain that it's square to the frame. So I flip the frame right side, and we're starting to mount the pillow bearing, drive shaft, and drive wheel. And this is the angle iron. Well, it's not iron, it's, it's aluminum, angle aluminum. 
and this is going to be used as our braces. And this will make the frame very sturdy. You'll notice that we're using a threaded rod to mount the idle wheel. And on both sides of the wheel we have hex nuts. And this allows us to position that idle wheel precisely by loosening and tightening one side or the other of the idle wheel. Here we're mounting the electric motor, pulley, and belts. You'll notice that the drive pulley is a little bit too big for it to be mounted, for the motor to be mounted directly to the 2x6. So I used a skill saw to create a little recess to provide more room for the pulley. You'll notice that you're seeing a five degree angle because I've mounted the front wheels. So I had to cut the length a little shorter here to provide that five degrees. And then I used the big gator tool to drill the hole through the two by four for the shaft or the, the wheel axle. The process of assembling the trommel drum is to first place the bicycle rims onto the idle wheel and drive wheel. I also placed the inner tube hole directly above the drive wheel for all three rims. This made it easier to align the rims when it was when they're being attached to the hardware cloth. So to get started, you'd place your hardware cloth on top of your three rims. And then start the process of attaching the hardware cloth to the three rims using your nylon tie straps. You have to be careful that all three rims are tied to the same row on the hardware cloth to ensure that the drum will be perfectly round. Another thing is you'll notice that when you receive your hardware cloth it may be damaged on the edges. So you may want to move in a few rows so the what you're attaching to the rim is perfectly straight. And you'll notice here how it's bent up. So as you begin the process of tying the hardware cloth to the rims, you're going to be using your drive wheels to rotate the rim up to the next available spoke hole so you can secure it on the upper side of the idle wheel. And this will ensure that once you've made all of the ties in the spoke holes that your trommel drum will be perfectly round. And this is a close-up view to show the tie strap wrapping around the vertical wire. And you'll also notice that the horizontal wires are on the inside of the drum. This causes the rocks to tumble. A section would look like for the bike rim. And you can see the tie strap comes around the vertical wire and it's pulled back through. I'm using a half inch square hardware cloth. The final piece to the trommel drum is providing the idle wheels protection from the dirt. And we do this by placing duct tape on the outside and the end and in the inside of the trommel drum. I give this idea 
Credit to Jeff Babcock in his video, Soil Trommel Slash Dirt Sifter. But even with this protection, it's not enough to stop all the dirt from making it to the idle wheel. So one additional piece I put on the trommel is little plastic barriers. And this is a better close-up view. So it's like a little plastic ridge that hugs close to the trommel wheel that provide a barrier between the idle wheel and the dirt. If you would like to learn more about the rock washer in the rock trommel, then please click the link above to see the next video. Thank you for watching.